Before I can tell you what the children's rights referendum is really about, I'll tell you what it's not about. It's not about protecting vulnerable children. This is a smokescreen. The state has all the provisions that obliges it to protect children. What this is really about is to take the authority of parents over their fam, sorry. What this is really about is to take parental authority and transfer it to the state. Yes, and, and, and the mechanism for this is very clear there in the wording, if people wish to look at it. And I, and I say to people, look at the wording. Don't vote on sentiment. Don't vote on assurances from politicians. Look at the wording. There are key words in the wording which give the game away. The phrase, the word paramount. The best interest of the ch child shall be paramount. This is a mechanism which will allow a so-called expert to give an opinion that you are unfit to bring up your own child. The word paramount is the strongest word you could imagine that would really cancel out other words which already protect the interests of the family in Article 41. And indeed, in the United Nations, the, the convention, the word paramount doesn't appear in this context. The it says that the best interest of the child shall be a primary concern, which allows for the rights of the child to be part of the family and to be balanced by the state's watchful eye in the context of failure of parent, parental duty. But here, the word paramount is it deliberately inserted so as to disable the protections which already exist for your family and for the privacy of your family and the integrity of the family and the right of the family to decide what is in the best interest of its own members, its own children. And so John, we're really talking about all children and that's another word in the, in the words they want to insert. It says that the state affirms all children. So again, it's not about vulnerable children. It's about everyone's children. Yes, indeed, and there's a, a, a clause three in this is about adoption, and it's a very interesting construction. When you, if you look again closely at the wording, I would ask people to look closely at the wording because it says provision shall be made in law for the uh, placement for uh, voluntary placement for adoption, uh, uh, and also for, for the adoption of any child. Now, any why, child. Why? Why are there two? Uh, clauses there in relation to adoption. There are two kinds of adoption. There is voluntary and there is compulsory, forced adoption. The second clause, even though the word forced or forced or compulsory doesn't exist, doesn't occur in there, that's what it means. It's the only reason that extra clause is in there. And this fundamentally is the final cutting edge of this amendment, whereby uh, the, your child, once you've, once the state having set a bar for you, which you cannot uh, jump, will then move on to take your child into care and from there will after a period of time, three years we understand, will actually have your child put up for adoption. And this saves the child having to expend monies as currently on children in care and foster care. 325 euros a week for a child up to 12, 353 euros a week for a child from 12 to 18. What could any parent in Ireland do who is hard pressed in the present economic climate uh, with austerity policies and so on. What could those parents not do with 325 euros per child to look after their own children? Instead, this government proposes to take those children from you, give them to strangers, and pay them while your heart is broken and your child's heart is broken. And, and move them on from those strangers to permanently being gone. That's, that's the mechanism, and we can see this already. I mean, people think this is somewhat extreme to suggest that it is possible for social workers to come in and basically move your children out and then have them adopted. This is already happening in the UK. People need to pay attention to what's going on there. In the Sunday Telegraph there's a journalist called Christopher Booker who has been writing for several years now, almost weekly, about forced adoption in the United Kingdom, how it works, where you have social workers accompanied by police officers walking into maternity wards in the dead of night, taking children from the arms of their mothers. It sounds extreme, I know. But it, but is, it is happening. Hap it is happening. This is the terrifying thing, that it almost you, you, you have to risk being seen almost to be paranoid to tell the truth about this. Well, you know, the whole concept of taking the rights of parents, giving that authority to the state, and then having the state define what failure is, having the state define what the best interest of your child is, having the state then say that their opinion is paramount. In other words, it's over and above the right of the family, which is only superior and antecedent. But even if people think forced adoption would never happen to my children or my grandchildren, 
they have to also think what the possibility does. It, it introduces a fear into every home. It introduces a fear, whereas now a family can go, parents can go to someone and say, we need help. We don't have enough to feed children properly. We're having a tough time with, with our child who has special needs or whatever. They can look for help and the Constitution, as it now stands, obliges the state to give that help. Once this obligation is gone, once we remove Article 42.5, then, and we introduce forced adoption, would a family, would a parent dare to say someone from the HS, to someone from the HSE, I can't cope? Would they dare to say, I haven't got enough money for proper food? Would they dare to look for help? Because if they do, then they have admitted failure and the crime, the punishment for failure in the new wording is confiscation of children to the ultimate of forced adoption. And failure is a very interesting concept here because the proponents of this amendment have been talking about grotesque ep episodes of, of abuse, neglect, uh, uh, sexual uh, abuse of children, which we've heard about and we know and we all agree that these are shocking. They can already be dealt with and should be dealt with very firmly under Article 42.5, which is to be eliminated by the way, which is to be removed and replaced by this new Article 42a. Now, failure. People think, oh yeah, of course we must intervene to stop this. But actually, when you actually look closely at the statistics in relation to taking into care, you find some interesting things. You find that actually the proportion of children in a given year, in 2004 for example, who were taken into care, 22% of the children taken into care in that year were taken into care on the basis of abuse, sexual, uh, physical and neglect, not defined. So 22%, less than a quarter in those, and very, very elastic categories included, included there, like neglect. The rest were to do with um, financial and housing issues, for example, 23%. Imagine, more people, more children were taken into care on the basis of economic issues, housing and, and money, than were taken in total in relation to abuse issues. Now, that tells us something really, really frightening about this present moment when the state's resources are under pressure, when family resources are under pressure because the state is on their backs trying to take back every penny it can to pay off the speculators. We have now, in the 50s and the 60s, we had this appalling spectre of the cruelty man who came to Irish homes from the NSPCC trying to earmarking children to, to bring them into institutions, into orphanages and so on. In the present era, we have the possibility of an even more frightening spectre the austerity man, who will come to your house and look around at your economic circumstances, look at your fridge to see is there food for your children. And if you fail, fail in this, under this heading, your children will be taken into care. This is the appalling vista that we now face if we allow this amendment to pass. And you know, John, parents, once they lose their authority, don't even have to fail. In this wording, they have to be likely to fail. Right. So someone loses a job. Maybe the fridge still has money in it because they've still got some savings. But the austerity man decides that they're not going to be able to keep the fridge full in the future. Yes. They're not going to be able to keep paying the mortgage. So we should take the children now while they're young enough to adopt rather than wait till they're older and not as adoptable. And also, I mean, there's an interesting, you see, as you know, Cathy, uh, adoption of ch children is better when they're young. I mean, people in Bernardas in the UK have, have actually, this is part of their policy, to urge that, that the sooner you take children, the better. Because... Well, the, the CEO of Bernardos in the UK has called for babies to be taken from the maternity hospitals. Well, this is the point, because at the moment we know that the average age of an adopted child in this country is one year. Now, that, over that, and this, is, this gives a lie to the kind of talk the statistics are giving us about the numbers of children in care, as if everybody, there was thousands of people out there wanting to adopt these children. There aren't. And once a child crosses, passes two years, really the interest almost diminishes it because people don't want damaged children and so on coming in and to, to, as adopted And anyways, children. these children have a relationship with their moms and dads already. Yes, but one of the spectrums, one of the syndromes we see in the United Kingdom is where a mother, an unmarried mother usually, 
who was a, previously perhaps attracted the attention because of, an, of a previous child uh, for maybe uh, bonding issues, maybe a public health nurse or whatever has made some report and she's had visits from social workers and so on, or there might be a history of drug addiction or whatever, or maybe a, violent, a relationship with a violent man, for example. That's a classic one, which yes. they always are attracted to. I, I know one of these cases. And what actually happens in is that they wait until the mother becomes pregnant again. And then at the dead of night, a week or two into the, when the, the child is just before the child is really bonded with the mother, they move in with social workers, police officers. And if, this sounds again, but Christopher Booker has written about this graphically in the most terrifying way, factually giving uh, instances of the cases, actual cases. Yes, and describe how children are snatched from the arms of their mothers and taken off and forcibly adopted on the basis of the say-so of social workers and so-called experts who are spouting nothing but psychobabble. This is what really fundamentally what it will mean for the average parent who has a sense of what love is, what is, how you love your children, how you actually have to deal with your children, negotiate with your children in terms of their interests versus their desire right? and so on. These, this will be all taken away from parents and outsiders will say on the basis of the rights of children what is right for the child, what is in the best interest of the child. So people who have no stake in the family, people who don't have to live with the consequences of anything, will come in and say, this child is entitled to this. The child may not want it, the child might, may not need it, the child may not even benefit from it, but if the state says so, then the parent better act or the state will say you have failed. These are the, this is the appalling vista of this uh, amendment, that actually it fundamentally ceases, it, 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 it ends the idea of parenthood fundamentally, biologically, naturally, and introduces a new dispensation which is really that parents will be caretaker parents of their children. On under, probation. On probation under the watchful eye of the state. Until such time as the state pronounces itself dissatisfied with your care for your own children and will then move in uh, and become the, uh, the real parent, which in de facto it will be all along, watching you observing you. And this, as you say, will create an appalling mindset, a chilling atmosphere in our society, in our democracy, whereby anybody with a child will have reason to fear the state absolutely. Because I, as I said again and again, you know, taking a child away is the most extreme remedy that I can imagine, short of execution. I mean, as a parent, I can't imagine. In fact, it would be a toss-up for me. Be shot in the head or have my child taken. And most parents would agree with that. Absolutely. Now, here we have a drastic remedy. There's an additional element which is really terrifying, which I see there's a kind of a context here where social workers and people involved in this area appear to become de-empathised by the process of involvement in this kind of work, whereby they can no longer connect with the emotions that parents feel or that children feel, and they're quite capable. Maybe it's necessary in order to actually snatch a child from the arms of its mother that you actually not be capable of a, of a, a really sort of uh, connecting with your own feelings, with your own emotions. But time and time and time again we hear these cases, I hear them all the time, where parents and their children are absolutely distraught perhaps at a contact visit uh, in the context of children being taken into care. And the, the, the social workers chatting in the corner, giggling among themselves, while this bawling is going on in the same room or social workers coming out of courts having won a case for, for a, to have a child removed from Ireland to England to be forced to be adopted, high-fiving one another as they come out of court, as if they were talking about a football match, when they have actually devastated a family and devastated maybe several children. Well, you know, it's funny, John, it's interesting because I've been getting emails, a lot of emails, from people working in the services from social workers who have a very different attitude, who maybe understand they've raised their own family and they understand about the importance of family. And they are writing to me. I've been getting emails and I've been getting letters saying, this is going to be a disaster. You know, warning me about the kind of training that many younger social workers have gotten in school and saying, this is all about no longer supporting the family, but just cutting the family off and just focusing on children as if children are in complete isolation. But you know, there'll be a lot of, you know, people maybe with comfortable incomes and, you know, established situations in Ireland, voters who think, well, this will never happen to me, uh -huh. this forced adoption. And maybe it won't. But do they understand that this giving over their parental authority, what about when they decide 
make a decision for their child like I, I don't really want him learning that in school. It is absolutely untrue, uh, uh, as they say consistently and persistently in this discussion, that children are invisible in the Constitution. That is absolutely untrue. Children or child, these words appear ten times in the Constitution. The word father, for example, doesn't appear at all. The word adult doesn't appear at all. It's a completely dishonest argument to make. Um, as Judge uh, Adrian Hardiman has said, Children already, the rights of children are already dealt with in the, in the context of family rights and in personal rights. Um, they are, uh, child, children are, are adequately protected and more than adequately protected if state agencies will actually do their duty. Article 42.5 allows for the intervention where there is a parental failure for physical or moral reasons. All of the, the categories of abuse and neglect which are persistently listed by proponents of this amendment and the shocking cases they misuse in order to make their arguments. All of those incidents, Roscommon case, Kilkenny, uh, Kelly Fitzgerald, all of these were capable of being dealt with under the present constitutional dispensation. Uh, it is completely dishonest to suggest that the constitution is deficient. As Adrian Hardyman said, the constitution does not favour parents over children. What it favours is the family over outsiders, but it allows for an intervention by the state to take the place of the parent where there has been a failure for physical or moral reasons. And that has absolute uh, uh, reach within uh, the, the various categories of abuse, neglect, sexual, physical abuse and neglect that arise time and again in this context. In our constitution, as it presently is, children have more rights than anyone else. They, first of all, are protected as persons. They have the same rights as I have, as you have, John. Secondly, they have the rights upheld within the family. Remember, family is family. It's not parents. It's also children. So their rights are protected in the family in the strongest way they're called antecedent and superior. The third level of rights they have is in terms of the rights that very much need state help. So the right to education and the right to have protection when their parents fail. And this is Article 42. So three layers of rights. But what they're asking us in this amendment is to get rid of the second layer of rights, that is the right to be protected by the family, the right to have family protection. And the third layer of rights, and that is the right to oblige the state to help them appropriately when the parents fail. So they're losing the second layer of rights and they're diminishing the third layer of rights. All on the excuse of giving children's rights. And of course, why would they do this? They do it because rights cost money. Rights cost money. Case after case has been fought in the High Court and proved the incredibly strong rights that children have in the Constitution. But they have cost implication and the state has always fought their responsibility to children. So now they're offering us a formula of words that will reduce their responsibility to children, increase their control of children and of parents who they find annoying because they advocate for their children, and will let them off the hook completely in terms of their own state neglect of children. And there is no provision in this amendment at all for a parent to com confront the state for a failure on the state's part in relation to his or her parents' own children. So uh, if the state cannot be held accountable for anything, whether it's under education or whether it's under any other heading, a failure of medical, you name it, the state cannot be held under account for this so-called children's rights referendum. Now, this should alert us to the real agenda here, because if we're really interested in children's rights, it should be, that should be the, the watchword no matter who is at fault. 
whether it's the parents, whether it's the state. But the state is excused, absolved from any uh, liability in this referendum. There's a, th a point that needs to be understood here, because I think people actually, in the modern context, we talk so much about rights, we always talk about individualised rights. It's very important to actually see the way the, the family unit functions constitutionally, which doesn't understand its members as individuals, it understands as a kind of a, a, an organic unit in which there are various forces to do with love, affection, duty, responsibility, protectiveness, dependency. So the child, your two-year-old child crawling around the floor, doesn't have the capacity to act as an individual agent exercising rights. And what this will mean is that the state will say, ah, there's your child, we represent her. We, That's right. We, against you. Yes, against you. So we are, we are wielding her rights against you. And we say what those rights are. And we say what they mean. And we even predict your capacity or incapacity to, as a parent, to, yeah. as a to fulfil them in the future. So we, can, we have unlimited power to say to you, you're not a good parent. We're going to take your child. And give your child to someone else. Yeah. This is the frightening thing. This is, I think really the great fear I have about this amendment is not to do with our arguments. It's the fact that the public have been dissuaded from looking at the detail by a bland media uh, coverage of the thing and by a bland and quite disingenuous and dishonest presentation of the facts by the official sources, the Yes campaign, in various guises. Uh, my one plea to people, even over and above urge you to vote no, is please read the amendment. Try to focus on the words in it. Look at the and, Constitution. And read what is taken out of the Constitution. Yes. Read Article 41 and 42, and particularly 42.5. These are the two relevant, because 42.5 will actually be taken out. Read that. Consider the word paramount in particular in the new wording. Now this trumps really everything else that's already there. And will really deliver the issues over to so-called experts who spout, well maybe science in some instances, but more often pseudo-science more often psychobabble, more often ideology, their own personal subjective views. And they would be facing a judge sitting on his bench who isn't an expert in his own mind in, on children and will be guided by this and also guided by the fact that he has a document, a report, which will substantiate whatever decision, decision he rubber stamps there. So that a new process will take over whereby the instinctive desire of parents to love their children and to give that desire expression through care and, and uh, duty and, 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 and protectiveness and sometimes going against the wishes of the child in their own best interest. That kind of understanding of parenting will be set aside and in its place will be a scientific model which really parents won't have any capacity to participate in or to contribute to or to, to offer evidence in. They will be told what is good for their children and they will be told that they don't measure up and that they failed. Mm.